Welcome back to the course on audio signal processing for music applications. In this week, we are talking about uh, the DFT. And in this uh, programming lecture, uh, we're going to learn how to program it, how to implement the DFT uh, equations in uh, Python. In particular, we're going to uh, talk both about the DFT equation, the direct uh, version of the DFT, and the inverse uh, DFT. In the DFT, we'll be basically, we'll be computing all the x of k, so we'll be computing all the uh, spectral values present in a given signal x of n, so we'll be iterating over our, all k and computing uh, the sum, and in the inverse, we'll be iterating over all uh, time, over all n, and for each n, we'll be computing this uh, sum. So let's start. Let's go to uh, a text editor, and we'll start uh, by implementing the DFT. So the first thing we need to do is to import uh, NumPy. Okay, that's uh, our package for array processing. Ne now we have to uh, initialize uh, our output uh, array of uh, spectral samples. So we will create an empty array. Okay. Uh, capital X, and we'll be now iterating over all frequency samples. So what we do is uh, uh, use the function range that uh, basically uh, uh, creates uh, values from 0 to n minus 1, so k now goes from 0 to n minus 1, and now we have to create the complex exponential at every frequency, at every k, so we'll create uh, a complex exponential um, times 2 pi, okay, multiply by the frequency we want, and we need to divide by capital N, and then we need to uh, create for all N, so we will uh, create an array of uh, uh, time samples of indexes that will go from 0 to N minus 1, Okay, and that's uh, uh, a complex exponential at frequency k. And now we can uh, compute the output spectrum, and we will do that by appending uh, to the existing uh, spectrum, whatever was from the previous computation, and we will compute the sum of the input signal x by uh, multiplied by the conjugate Okay, uh, of our complex exponentials. So this is the inner product that uh, we talked about in theory. And that's it. That's our DFT implementation. Uh, we can save it uh, in a file. Let's call dft.py. And so this is a script that will run that. In order to see if it works, well, we need to put an input signal. So let's, uh, before the, the code of the DFT, let's start using uh, uh, a particular signal. Let's uh, define uh, a signal of size n and that will be equal to 64. And let's have a frequency that uh, could be, for example, 7. Okay, and uh, now we can uh, declare the time uh, signal as a, let's say, a complex exponential and uh, we will have a complex exponential that will be again 1j uh, multiplied by 2 times pi by the way I left here also the numpy package okay 2 pi and then we multiply by our frequency k0 our frequency index we divide by n and again we need to create an array of values so that we can compute um, n capital N values of an input signal and that's it now uh, we compute the DFT and we just in order to see if it did anything we just uh, we will plot uh, the result in order to plot we need to import the um, matplotlib uh, matplotlib the Pi plot, okay, um, 
by plot and we will call it plt okay and now in the plotting we will uh, again do a time uh, index being uh, NPR range capital N and the spectrum it's a complex signal so we'll just plot the uh, the absolute value of it and that should do it and then we will uh, have some accesses axis so that uh, it, they will go from 0 to n minus 1 and the horizontal axis will go from 0 to n and that should do it. Now we just uh, show it and if we save it uh, and we go to the terminal and we just type python uh, dft.py okay there is a problem matplot uh, matplotlib dot uh, there is a typo here that uh, pyplot okay that's better. Uh, mat plot leap. Oh, uh, okay. Here uh, another typo. Import. And another uh, typo. Okay, I made uh, another mistake here. Minus one. And Okay, uh, that's it. So that's uh, the DFT of a complex signal, and we see here that it's uh, uh, it's 64 at the location seven, and the rest is zero. So the, the the analysis has proven that our input signal really was uh, a complex sinusoid of value uh, seven. Okay, uh, now let's uh, do it uh, with real signals. Uh, so instead of having this um, uh, complex sine wave, let's go to a real signal. So most of the code will be the same. So the only thing we have to do is uh, change um, our uh, input signal to be a cosine instead of being a complex exponential, which is the cosine, and we don't have the j. Um, that uh, should the work so this is our complex uh, our real signal and we just uh, save it and we compute it again okay and now instead of having one peak it has two so a real signal has two complex exponential uh, results is the sum of two complex exponentials and we can visualize it here here the, the issue is that uh, the axes uh, are not so intuitive now because it, it gives a seven and then this other value which is uh, not uh, it should be minus seven. So uh, a better way to implement this is in, instead of dealing with uh, time index and frequency index going from zero to n minus one, it's good to go from minus n over two to n over two. So to do that, what we will be doing is create some uh, array that will be quite uh, used for different things. So it will be uh, NPR range, and this will be going from minus n over 2 to n over 2. Okay, and this is our time indexes, and also we will have uh, frequency indexes that will be uh, our k indexes. So now instead of computing from, um, from 0 to n, we will be computing in the DFT from minus over 2, n over 2 to n over 2. So we'll iterate over k uh, uh, v. And in here again, we will be in our uh, time index, we will be n v. And uh, hopefully that uh, should work. And then of course in the axis, we will have as output axis minus n over 2 to n over 2 minus 1 and in here uh, the plotting again will be over k, um, kv okay so now uh, well there is another mistake here uh, 
in here I miss the over 2 over 2 okay and now okay this is better so now we have centered around 0 and we have the minus 7 frequency and the 7th frequency okay what happens if we do not have an integer value uh, frequency instead of 7 we will have let's say 7.5 okay we save it we run it and well uh, clearly it's very different now uh, it uh, the projection of our input signal into the complex sinusoids of the DFT does not return a single value but it's positive values for all uh, complex exponentials so that means that the projection um, uh, has uh, positive values for all the spectrum okay and uh, we explain this uh, in the theory class okay now we can do the inverse DFT the equation that we also talked about and we showed in the in the slide so now we will be implementing uh, the inverse DFT equation so we'll need to uh, go over all um, all samples of uh, n and compute all these equations so how do we do that so it's quite similar to the DFT so what we'll be doing is uh, once we get uh, the DFT analysis out we will now create the inverse DFT uh, code so we'll first again initialize the output signal Y with an array that will be an empty array okay and we will be now doing a loop but over n okay so we'll be doing uh, over n in nv and uh, we will have to compute the complex uh, exponentials but they're going to be a little bit different because now here the complex exponentials is 1j multiplied by 2 multiplied by np dot pi and in here instead of uh, multiplying by um, all uh, for every k we'll do it for every n divided by n and here we will have array of frequencies of k v so this way this basically uh, s is the sum of all complex exponentials of all possible frequencies at a given sample and now the output will be again we will uh, keep appending the output samples and we will be uh, appending to the y sample the sum of the spectrum x by um, the uh, s which are the complex exponentials and that should uh, do it this should compute the inverse uh, DFT well we are missing something in the there was uh, uh, 1 over n and, and multiply which is the normalization factor of the inverse DFT and now to plot what we're going to plot is we're going to plot uh, for all uh, samples we're going to plot the output signal y and the axis will go again from minus n over 2 uh, to n over 2 minus 1 but being a time uh, signal it's going to go from minus 1 to 1 and that uh, should do it uh, hopefully if we execute this uh, okay there is a problem of k uh, here we type kn which is kv and now if we run it okay this is uh, the output signal y so at uh, time zero is a is a cosine so this was a cosine function and it has 7.5 periods of our uh, signal that's the input signal we had and this is exactly the same than the output signal we have computed and that's all that's all I wanted to say uh, so basically uh, in this uh, class we have implemented the DFT and the inverse DFT equations so please make sure that you understand those equations and of course we have been using complex sine waves the DFT sine waves to uh, implement that 
And in the, in the coding, uh, we needed uh, two packages, the NumPy and uh, the matplotlib. Uh, and that's it. Uh, so we have uh, hopefully uh, completed uh, the, the DFT explanation. Uh, we, we talked about the theory part, we made some demonstrations, and now in this programming class, we have been able uh, to actually implement it. Uh, and of course, uh, this is not all, this is just the very beginning. It's going to get a little bit more complicated. But uh, please uh, hang on and uh, hopefully I will see you next week with uh, more advanced topics. Thank you very much.